Drill rod care and maintenance are crucial parts to your horizontal directional drilling operation. Fire stick drill rod is specially made to give you many successful hours of operation. Proper care of your horizontal directional drill and fire stick drill rod are essential to getting the maximum useful life from your fire stick drill rods. Fire stick drill rods have specially designed components that provide benefits during directional drilling. The drill rods are constructed from one piece forged rod. Because of this design there are no welded ends which can weaken and break off. Also each fire stick rod is balanced throughout with special steel alloys for end to end column strength and optimal downhole flexibility. These external and internal upsets are forged to add strength at the point of joint makeup. Double shouldered to withstand rotational torque, this design helps maintain the makeup of the rod under downhole stress. Each rod is heat treated to deliver maximum performance. This means you get more resistance to downhole scoring and wear, and more strength during thrusting and the flexibility to tolerate the recommended bend radius without fatigue. Threads are machined to Vermeer specifications for smooth, fast makeup and breakout of joints. Each rod goes through a rigorous inspection. Thread height, thread profile, pitch, diameter, and other quality characteristics are checked, tested, and documented. The fire stick drill stem is one of the best on the market, but it is up to you, the user, to keep them maintained once they have been put in use. Drill rod maintenance and expense are important factors to consider on your directional drilling project. Look at the cross section of a fire stick drill stem pin. Take a close look at the crowns. They're not sharp, they're rounded. Look at the root and the pitch of the front flank and of the load flank. The front flank is machined to a lesser taper than the rear flank. This design of the front flank promotes smooth makeup of the joint. There is a barely perceptible thousandth of an inch gap. When optimal makeup is achieved, this gap closes with this double shoulder design. Both the inner and outer shoulder handle the downhole stress, lessening the threat of swelled box ends which result in pin fatigue. It's one of the reasons clean threads and complete uses of full makeup torque are critical components of a directional drilling success. This is what a proper made up joint looks like. The crowns and roots match up with limited gap between them. But drill rod problems are real. Generally, they are caused by inadequate job site inspection, improper makeup and breakout, and insufficient maintenance. See these rolled threads? They come from incorrect makeup or breakout. We'll show you in the next section how to avoid these. Here the threads have been torn off. How can you have a good makeup with these threads? See the knicker gouge? Incorrect makeup or breakouts can put your drilling project at risk. If you don't use proper thread compound, the drill rod threads will turn sharp as shown here. Sharp threads can lead to weak joints and sometimes tough or impossible rod breakouts. Look at the damage to this pin and box. This damage was caused by improper use of drill vise jaws. Poor connections of the drill rods may cause a poor connection and leaking joint if you don't switch out the drill rod. Do not use this bent rod in your drill string. If a rod has been overstressed, it will be permanently fatigued and lack column strength. Using bent rod will increase the chance of rod failure during drilling. The items we've discussed can lead to premature rod failure and possibly costly project failure. A drilling team must prepare the drill and rod every day for full maximum performance. Review to the operator's manual supplied with your Vermeer drill to know how to properly maintain fire stick drill rod. What you do before work begins during the drilling operation and at the end of the day will make a big difference. What you do for weekly and periodic drill rod maintenance should be geared towards ensuring the machine and drill rod are ready to perform. You should never risk possible drill rod failure down hole because of improper operation or lack of proper maintenance. Before work every day, there are some simple things you can do to ensure production is uninterrupted because of drill rod problems. Look at this cross section of these dirty threads. The smallest amount of dirt, grime, or sand could prevent complete makeup. Look at the pin. It can't sit fully into the box. This will cause pin rocking, pin head wear, thread wear, and box shoulder swelling down hole. Daily, inspect the drive chuck pin closely. Check the threads for wear or any damage. 
Drive truck pins are worn by forced makeups or by misalignment. If the drive truck pins are worn or gouged, they will damage every box end of every drill rod they mate with. Recap the drive truck with a thread protector cap for storage. Look at the threads on this box end. You will never get a makeup with these threads that will handle downhole stress. That's why it's crucial to inspect the drive chuck every day. Use a thread profile gauge to check for thread wear. Using proper thread compound is important. Oils, lubricants, or industrial greases cannot be used. They will not withstand the torque which is applied to a tool joint. Unsuitable rod greases will squeeze out of the threads. This will allow metal to metal scoring and result in bad makeup and damaged threads. Use a Vermeer recommended compound which will withstand makeup torque. Some thread compounds are temperature rated for hot or cold conditions. In this section, we want to show you proper makeup and breakout procedures during drilling and pullback with a Vermeer horizontal directional drill. And also show proper steering with the fire stick drill rods. You can extend drill rod life by using the HDD properly. Be sure to always follow the instructions provided in your Vermeer drill operators and maintenance manual. This video presents selected operating and maintenance procedures and is not a substitute for a thorough reading and understanding of the product's operators and maintenance manual. Place thread compound on the drive chuck pin when making up every rod and during rod breakout, ensuring you apply compound to the shoulders. Never apply thread compound to dirty threads. Fail to use thread compound and the result will be metal to metal scoring, the first step in lost threads. The box end of the rod must be lined up with the drive chuck prior to threading. Also make sure the thread end of the rod is aligned with the box end of the downhole rod. This is a type of damage that comes from jamming the drive chuck into the box end of the drill rod or having a gearbox which is misaligned. Here's an animation of joints downhole if they are not made up correctly or not made up with good clean threads. Look at the pin rocking back and forth caused by dirty threads or worn or damaged threads or bad makeup. The thread will wear and the spud will stop next to the shoulders of the box end, swelling them. Imagine the pin fatigue under downhole's torque and stress. During boring, it is crucial that you do not make steering corrections that exceed the maximum allowable pitch change of the drill rod. Any bend in the drill path, whether it be at the beginning of the drill path when you want to seek maximum depth of your bore or when you want to make corrections to avoid obstacles during drilling must be within the allowable pitch change of the rod. No fire stick drill rod has a higher pitch change than 10% over a 10 foot length. For example, make an adjustment from minus 25 to minus 10 and you have oversteered the rod. Not only that, but every rod that follows will pass through that excessive point of correction. This will fatigue the rods bow them, and even possibly lead to downhole rod failure. This warning against oversteering goes double for the drill head. Any oversteering may bend and damage the drill head. This joint is the lead joint in your drill path and takes a lot of stress when you make steering corrections. If the drill head pin is broken, the sonde is also lost. Be sure to apply thread compound to the drive truck prior to rod breakout. Be sure to rotate the drive truck as you bring it down the rack. Make up the connection at full recommended makeup torque, release your front vice jaws, and pull the rod up the rack using reverse rotation. Stop reverse thrust to position the next rod properly. Use the rod indicator for proper rod positioning. Remember to use the rod joint indicator to properly position the rod joint in the power vise. This will center the joint in the power vise. Remember clamping too close to the rod joint shoulders will damage them. If you clamp the jaws too close to the shoulder, you risk damaging the shoulder and reducing the rod's useful life. You should be at least one half inch away from the box end and shoulders. To break the rod connection using the power vise, clamp the lower and upper vices, rotate the upper vise to break the joint. Unclamp upper vise. Using reverse rotation, unthread the joint. While continuing rotation, use reverse thrust to move the rod back until it is aligned with the second mark on the joint indicator. Clamp upper vise. Rotate the drive chuck to break out the upper joint. Once it is disengaged, continue rotating and use reverse thrust. Too much reverse thrust will cause the thread to rip out, possibly stripping the threads. These stripped threads come from forced breakout. Most thread problems come from forced thread makeup and breakout. Easy end of the day maintenance can help you prepare for the next day's work. 
First wash down the machine with clean water. Use clean water. Don't add more grime and dirt to what you already have there. Be sure to wash the vise jaws. Grit and sand on these lead to accelerated wear. Wash the drill rack. In sandy conditions, grit and sand may collect and reduce gear strip wear life. On a weekly basis, there are some maintenance steps you need to take to ensure every rod in the basket and machine are ready for another week's hard work. Examine the drive chuck with a thread profile gauge. The use of the thread profile gauge will help you determine whether or not the drive chuck pin needs to be replaced. Certainly, if the drive chuck pin is nicked or gouged, you should replace it so it doesn't damage box and threads. Weekly, you should unload all the rods from the basket. Flush out all drill rods of dirt that may have accumulated. Examine the threads of each drill rod carefully with thread gauges. Are the crowns sharp? Is there thread missing? Are the box end or pin end shoulders rounded or nicked? Remove the rods with questionable threads. Use the thread profile gauge to check for thread wear. If the wear is significant, remove the drill rod from the basket. If crowns are peaked, you may be able to file them down. Roll each rod on a flat surface to see if they are bowed. Remember, caused by oversteering, bowed rods are permanently fatigued. Remove the bowed rods from the rod basket. If your HDD utilizes a starter rod, remove the starter rod from the rod it was on and replace it on another rod. Do this so you won't be using the same lead rod every week. Periodically, you should take the time to examine all drill rods and redress the threads if necessary. There is a kit that will help you. Check with your local Vermeer dealer. Redressing the threads means filing down peaked crowns on pins, cleaning up the roots with emery wheels, and filing down neck shoulders. Redressing threads is especially important if you are adding new rods to an on-site drill rod supply. If you are unable to keep the new rods separate in a drill string, it is crucial that the older rods thread be reconditioned. You may want to make sure when the old rods mate with the new rods you will have properly made up joints during operation. Redressing also entails using a thread brush in the box ends. These have been just a few of the operation and maintenance tips that you need to follow to avoid drill rod problems while drilling with your fire stick rods. Preventative maintenance and periodic care and attention will help increase the useful life of the rods.